Hi, it's Roger Osborne here. In today's video, I'll show you everything you need to know about how to find beach worms. If you check out the description below, you'll find all the points covered in this lesson. Also, I'm going to be putting up a whole heap of stuff soon about fishing and reading beaches for the best spots, so don't forget to subscribe. Essentially, the premium time for catching beach worms is right on the bottom of low tide. You can catch beach worms really up to mid tide, although it becomes much more difficult because the beach worms, most of them generally are located in that section of sand right at the bottom of the water at the lowest tide. Now also tides vary in height, as with high tides and low tides, according to the moon phase over the period of a month, some low tides are really low, some low tides not so low. So really on the really low, low tides, that's, an, that's a great time to go worming because you can reach worms that you potentially otherwise wouldn't be able to reach because the water's too high. So just to summarize, the best time is really low tide and about an hour either side of low tide. Really just about any fish will attract beach worms or even meat, a piece of steak, uh, although meat is best when it's a little bit smelly, a little bit off. Essentially any decaying flesh um, works. My father used to use smoked kippers years ago, he used to go to the fish shop and buy smoked kippers. I just, I'm happy using pilchards because I always have blocks of pilchards in the freezer for fishing off the rocks and I normally use about half a dozen or six pilchards in a stocking and I find that that's the best bait. However you could use old fish heads when you go fishing and you catch fish and you fillet your fish you could keep, keep a couple of the, hit, the fish heads and frames and use them for bait. So really you can use most fish but I would recommend uh, pilchards as my favourite bait. Some people like to use um, a large bait in like a fish net or a hessian sack or some sort of bag of old fish, fish and fish bones which they tie some string to and then they tie that string to a piece of stick or dowel rod and what they do is they use this big bait uh, to attract the worms and then they poke their stick into the sand and leave that bait washing around attracting more worms while they use a smaller piece of bait to actually catch the worm. I don't bother with doing that. All I use is a stocking with six pilchards in it. And that stocking is both my worm attractor and my bait. It's, bo it's both in one. So essentially I'm using my stocking with my pilchards in it as my bait to attract the worms. When I see a worm, I wrap the stocking around my hand and hold that as my worm bait to catch the worms with. It's really simple, I don't think you really need all the, all the other stuff. Just need a stocking and a few pilchards. I always keep a block of pilchards in the freezer because I do a lot of rock fishing as well. And you can see I've got a stocking here, but all I do is I just get the stocking ready like so, and then I hold that, hold that in my hand. I usually like to line the pilchards up head first so that they sit nicely in the stocking. I normally use about maybe six pilchards. I put them in my stocking like that. And then I just get my stocking like that. And that is my, that's what I use to attract the beach worms with. And that's also what I use to catch the beach worms with. Some beaches have countless beach worms, other beaches you struggle to find a worm. So an important point is that some people, you might have tried catching beach worms and you've gone down to the beach and you just can't seem to really find any. But you know some beaches there really just aren't hardly any worms there so you know that's not really, really an indication of whether you can catch worms or not, there's just no worms there and if there's no worms there it doesn't matter how good you are, you can't catch them. So what I normally do, in the area that I live, obviously where I live I know which beaches are good worming beaches, 
which beaches don't seem to have many worms. But if you're traveling to a new area, if you're on holidays or something, you need to have a bit of a look around or potentially you could go to the local tackle shop and just ask them, do they know which beaches are good for catching beach worms? That might save you a little bit of time. But it's important to note that not all beaches have a population of worms. Oh, this is a great shot for looking at general beach structure. Um, we're looking at it specifically concerning beach worms. Um, we're looking for the nice gently sloping flat areas of sand that are usually found in front of a sandbar. And you can see in this photograph there's a lovely big, big deep gutter which would be great for fishing. And on either side of that gutter you can see that the sand is flatter and slopes more gently into the water. These are the sorts of spots we're looking for to find beach worms. We don't want to do it right in front of the gutter where there's a short edge and not much wash. We want the nice large flat areas of sand. This is what you're looking for. A sand flat with a nice gentle slope where the waves just wash up slowly and then slowly back into the water. This is also important because you cover a large area with the scent of your bait. This spot here is not so good for worming. You can see the waves are just lapping on the shore, hardly going up and down at all, which when I'm waving my bait, it really only goes a couple of feet. So it's not really ideal in that, in that spot. When you find a spot on the beach or a beach that looks good for worming, has all the right ingredients, you need to go down and test it. Just because it looks good doesn't mean that there's worms there. You need to have a look for about five minutes. If there's worms, fantastic, you can start worming. But if there are no worms, after five minutes, you need to move to a different spot. How can you spot a worm? How do you, how do you sight a worm? Essentially what happens is when your scent is going back in the wave and the worm smells it, the worm pokes its head out of the sand. Now as a wave is rushing back, there's a certain amount of water going back. When the worm pokes its head out of the sand, the water rushing past it creates a V. You'll be looking at the sand and where there was nothing, all of a sudden there'll be something which is actually getting in the way of the water rushing past it. And often when you look for worms, you'll wave your bait, and then as the water's going back, you'll see a V over there. You'll see a V there. You'll see where there was nothing there. You'll see all of a sudden these things creating a wash as the wave rushes past them. So that's what you're looking for. You'll often notice when you're looking on the beach also that if there's a shell or a little rock there, that when the water washes past the shell or the rock, that also creates that, that wash or that V. So you're obviously not looking for shells and rocks, but you're looking for something poking its head out of the sand that's creating that V as the wave washes back. That's why it's important to get plenty of your scent over a reasonably wide arc so that when your smell is going back, you're covering a wide area rather than a narrow area. It's important to note that beach conditions change very rapidly. They can change dramatically from one day to the next. You could have a great spot for beach worming with lots of worms and then go back tomorrow and it could be terrible. Uh, the sand could have moved, there's no worms there anymore. So it's important to check different spots and not just assume that where you caught worms today will be good tomorrow. You might ask the question, can you catch beach worms all year round? Certainly, where I live on the east coast of Australia, yes. You can catch them all year round, day or night. But I'm really interested to know if you can catch beach worms in other states of Australia, like Western Australia, South Australia, etc. So it would be great if you could leave me a comment if you know anything about worms in your area. Also, I've got some fantastic video footage coming up of showing you how to find the fish on a beach how to read a beach with real detail so that you can be successful when you go down to the beach next time. So remember to subscribe and you'll get that video as soon as it comes out. 
I'll see you in the next video.